on this episode. She's just gorgeous. You know, I love you too. Oh, gosh. Elle looks a picture of health, but her young life is in grave danger. If she doesn't have this procedure, she would die usually within the first 12 months. Wow, he does have a big belly, doesn't he? Ozzy's stomach has suddenly bloated alarmingly, and Alex is shocked. I've never seen an abdomen this large. I'm a bit worried about what I'm actually going to find in there. And what's wrong with little Dylan that has Kate so concerned? Oh my gosh, this is so awful. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. At Rob's practice near Sydney, it's a huge day for Angela and her gravely ill white Swiss shepherd, Elle. The three-month-old pup needs urgent surgery to correct a birth defect that's endangering her life. Big day today. It is. Come on in. Okay. Let's go into Thank the consult. You. Angela initially observed the fact that this dog was having trouble with solids but not liquids. So she had the suspicion that something was wrong with the esophagus, yeah, the tube going from the mouth down to the stomach. Yeah. For 10 weeks, Angela has had to hold Elle upright and hand feed the fragile puppy liquids in the hope of keeping her alive until she was strong enough for surgery. She's brought so much like joy you know, to our lives because she, she is so happy and, and joyful. And look, this is, this is the only shot at a normal life. She's just gorgeous. Thank you, Dr. Rob. Nothing except for a beautiful personality <laughs> that I love you too. Oh, gosh. That's right. Recent x-rays revealed Elle has a rare congenital disorder. A ligament is strangling her oesophagus, preventing solid food from entering her stomach. We impregnated some food with barium and made her eat that, took an x-ray, and all that food was sitting in front of the heart it couldn't go through down to the stomach. There was a blockage of that tube. I get too attached to him. Yeah, I know you are, but I do too. You can see that she's got such a big personality and a little package. Yes, she sure has. <laughs> All right. So we get rid of the ligament and that releases the esophagus and allows all the food to go down. Gosh, her lungs are so clear, Angela. Nothing, nothing inhaled in there at all. If she doesn't have this procedure, she would die usually within the first 12 months. Either she'll die of lack of nutrition or inhaling food into the lungs. That's usually what kills them. Lots of prayers have been sent up for her, I oh, understand. Yes. <laughs> the boys are all very happy with her and they love her. And, yes. Oh gosh. I love you too. <laughs> but the high risk surgery to correct Elle's life threatening defect could also prove fatal. This is you know, serious surgery right near the heart. The first thing we do is literally crack the chest open. When you do that in any animal, the lungs collapse. They can't breathe. So we have to ventilate. If we overdo it and expand the lungs too much, you could literally burst the lungs. If you underdo it, not enough oxygen getting round and the animal dies of lack of oxygen. So you've got to just have the right amount. You're the best, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really, I'm nervous. I just, um, I can't imagine life without her, but it was still the best 12 weeks and it taught me so many things. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> Bye, Elle. Um, I'll see you soon. At Sash Animal Hospital in Sydney, Aussie's worried owners have brought him in to see Alex. Hi, Monica. I'm Alex. Hi. I'm one of the vets on today. And we've got Aussie here. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, how about we bring Aussie through to the room and he can get settled in while we have a talk? Okay. Yep. Okay. Would you like to follow me? Yep. yep. Oh, he's a big boy. Yep. Hey. Hey. 
There we go. Doesn't like to be handled a lot. Yeah, okay. I'll just put him on the floor so that he can have a wander around. There we go. Monica and daughters Sam and Alex became alarmed when 13-year-old Ozzy's belly suddenly ballooned out to more than twice its normal size. Wow, he does have a big belly, doesn't he? He does. His stomach was bloating up more and more, and I thought it would go down, and he just overate. And then his back paws started to swell up as well. How long is this? this it's about three weeks. Three weeks? Wow, that's fast. And yeah. uh, his paws just probably last three or four days, they've swollen, so... Yeah, and it's just his back ones, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's just his back one. And mm. then now he feels thinner, mm -hmm. even though he looks like he's His big belly, yeah. yeah he's skinnier yeah. on the rest of his body. Yeah, yeah. okay. Ozzy's huge belly is setting off alarm bells for Alex. We sometimes do see animals with enlarged abdomens, but this is by far one of the largest I've ever seen, and especially considering how quickly it has developed. Okay, and have you noticed any breathing difficulties, coughing, wheezing, anything like that? No? no. Okay. He's acting normal. Okay. It just, he looks pregnant. My biggest concern with Ozzy uh, today is that he might have an underlying heart condition. When the valves in the heart aren't working properly, fluid can build up. He might need to like fart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think I think this is a little bit more than than just a, a bit of flatulence. Having a feel of his tummy when I was putting him on the floor, it's quite firm, really yeah, hard. It is. I think that we yeah. probably need to do some further investigations yeah. to get to the bottom of this, yeah. and most likely oh. that's going to involve something like an ultrasound scan yeah. on his belly, yeah. just like we do with humans. Ozzy is going to need an urgent ultrasound to find out the cause of his massive bloating. For Ozzy's loving family, especially Monica's disabled daughter Sam, it's going to be an anxious wait. Why is he big of a vet for that soon? You're the best, Rob. Thank you. In Sydney, Rob is about to perform okay. life and death surgery on three-month-old Elle. This is uh, going to be not an easy task. He's hoping to correct a birth defect, where a ligament is strangling Elle's esophagus, preventing solid food from entering her stomach. Extremely nervous, not very nervous, extremely nervous today. This is yeah, serious surgery, right near the heart. There's jeopardy every step of the way, but it's the difference between a very short life with a horrible death or a normal life. Well, I have to take this risk. Good strong pulse. Elle's owner, Angela, is petrified she'll never see her beloved puppy again. So apprehensive. I probably shouldn't have YouTubed what this surgery's like. But um, look, I know she's in the best of hands today. Make it a little bit easier to find the lesion is actually put a hose down her esophagus. And that hose will stop at the lesion that can't go through. Sit there. Yep. <laughs> Okay, you ready? We're in. There's the lungs. And there's the heart. So we're in the chest now, well and truly. We can see the heart literally pumping, keeping this puppy going. We can see the lungs inflating, deflating. Brit's taking over total respiration now. She's in charge of this puppy's breathing. Now we've got to try and locate that tube. I can feel the trick here. Can't feel your tube. Just move it for a sec for me. Stop, stop. So it's just in there that's getting caught. Why? If Rob can't find the end of the guide tube, he won't be able to remove the problematic ligament, and Elle will have no chance of surviving into adulthood. Try again. Try 
try that now. No. no. This could be a real bad one. Wow, he does have a big belly, doesn't he? He does. At Sash in Sydney, Alex is about to perform an ultrasound on Ozzy to try to find out what's causing his alarmingly bloated stomach. Well done, so brave. Good boy. Ozzy's abdomen is huge. It's almost double or triple the width of his, his body uh, and it's, it's bulging out so hard. I've never seen an abdomen this large. My biggest concern with Ozzy today is that he might have an underlying heart condition. Hello. It's when the valves in the heart aren't working properly, fluid can build up. So I want to have a look in his chest cavity and see if there's fluid accumulating in there. And while I have a bit of a sticky beak in his chest, see whether or not there's a, a heart condition. The suspected fluid buildup is now also affecting Ozzy's back legs. And we've got this pitting edema, which means when I push my thumb in there, it's leaving an impression in that swelling. So he's got some major abnormalities happening here. Okay. 8.1 kilos. Big boy, Ozzy. He's got to watch his breathing because with all that fluid in his abdomen pushing up against his lungs. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, so this, this ultrasound is already showing me some very obvious changes that we have in here. Um, you can see this big black area uh, is all fluid. So we've got five, six centimetres worth of fluid here before we actually have uh, internal organ structures, which are all pushed down the bottom. So I think we should collect a sample. I'm just gonna have a quick look at his chest as well. I need him to sort of be tilting down that way anyway. Oh no, that's not good. In Bondi, Gillian has brought adorable Dylan to see Kate, concerned about a nasty issue in the little dog's cheek. Her mum has brought her in because she's really worried about this hole that exists in the top of her cheek. And I would be worried too because there's pus coming out of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dylan is a little sweet little thing, isn't she? She is just adorable and she's so loved. You say bye to your mum? Say bye, mum. Bye. Look who I've got, Maria. Oh, hi. This is Dylan. Dylan. Do you know Dylan? Yes. Long time no see. I know. Do you think I can have a look at your teeth? Are you going to let me? Good girl. I know, Good Bubs. girl. What we're going to need to do is just give her some pain relief and actually knock her out. Okay. So we can actually have a look at what's actually going on in there. Okay. But whatever it is, it's not very good, is it? We're going to help you, Dylan. Let's do a little bit of pre-oxygen. Do you want this? I don't like it. I'm a bit worried about what I'm actually going to find in there. Mm. It's like it could get in there and be like an absolute mess. Yeah. Do you think it's been there for a while? Well, yeah, because I mean, I don't think she's allowed people to look in her mouth. Yeah. So she's had no dental exam for a long time. Yorkie's mouths are notorious for being terrible. This is not Gillian's fault. This is a breed problem. The reality is, is not only do these Yorkshire Terriers have terrible teeth, Gillian does brush Dylan's teeth. She has a very little mouth. It's very hard to look in there. And what you see on the outside of a tooth doesn't necessarily always correspond to what's happening at the root. Go to the monkey. Let's have a look at this hole. With Dylan safely anaesthetized, Kate can investigate the issue in her cheek and also get a good look inside her tiny mouth. It's really hard to get through. It's like a jungle down here. This most likely is a tooth root abscess. It's the exact location. There's a nice big hole in her her top cheek there, there's pus coming out of it. Oh my gosh, this is so awful. This is a hole in her face, Maria. Oh my gosh. Like no joke, a hole in her face. Well, if this is what it looks like outside, imagine what this is gonna look like inside. If 
that's there. I don't understand why I can't through the tube. In Sydney, Rob is having trouble locating a guide tube he's inserted into young dog L's oesophagus to find a blockage. Yep, go forward. We've got to go in there and find the actual spot where the ligament is, this ligamentum arteriosum, this Harry Potter curse. We've got to get rid of that and that releases the esophagus and allows all the food to go down. Let's come back a bit. So I've got the ligament there. Rob has finally found the structure blocking food in L's esophagus. So it's just in there. Then. Slight problem, the heart's in the way, as usual. But he must now try to carefully snap it with his fingers without damaging nearby blood vessels. The stretch area has a lot of fibrous tissue around it, so we're still in a lot of trouble. We'll persist. You know, snap the wrong thing, and this dog's dead instantly because she'll hemorrhage straight away. And we won't be able to stop it. Try now. Resistance. Back. As Rob works to free up the constriction, the crucial guide tube is being used to indicate the moment he finally manages to make a big enough opening in L's food pipe. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So we're pushing and prodding and, and all of a sudden, yes, <laughs> bang, it comes through and hallelujah, it just went straight into the stomach. Oh, oh there was a lot of relief. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just getting that hose to go all the way into the stomach. That part of the surgery was successful. So we've got through the actual stricture, we've removed the ligament, that Harry Potter's curse of ligamentus arteriosum. Just wish he had his wand. Now that the ligament preventing food entering L's stomach is gone, she'll be able to eat normally. All right, let's get some suture, please. That way. Despite their exhilaration, Rob and his team can't relax just yet. Still nervous as all get up because we've got to try and bring everything together without any air in that chest cavity, and that is not easy. I could still lose this pup. We're not out of the woods. Oh my gosh, this is so awful. This is a hole in her face, Maria. Oh my gosh. Like, no joke, a hole in her face. In Bondi, Kate's shocked to discover a hole in Yorkshire Terrier Dylan's cheek and fears it's being caused by a festering tooth abscess. How about we open this mouth and have a look what's going on? Oh, oh no. I knew this was going to be like this. Oh my gosh. Dylan's tooth has a massive infection that spread into her gums and erupted through the dreadful hole in her cheek. So see up there where it's all like that kind of funny color, that's all pus. This abscess is really bad and she has not said a word. And this just goes to show how tolerant dogs are of pain. Like these little dogs, they're tough as nails. So we're gonna start by taking x-rays. Let's take x-rays of all her whole mouth, right? Right, that tooth has to go. Yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's full of pus. It's relatively clean. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh geez. It's like a Ow. hole in your face, kiddo. I see a tooth root abscess once a week, at least, right? but it's a pretty rare occurrence that I see one that's been so bad that the pus and the pressure has built up so much that it has burst through the top of the cheekbone. Wow. I'm gonna try and bring everything together without any air in that chest cavity and that is not easy. In Sydney, Rob's under extreme pressure as he sews up the chest of white Swiss Shepherd, L. His main fear now is that young L could suffer a collapsed lung. 
A lot of stitching now, a lot of stitching. So the big worry that we have is that she develops a pneumothorax, air inside the chest. You have air in your lungs. Air in the chest cavity pushes the lungs and collapses them. We can't have that. We've got to get that air out. What we do is, my nurse now will blow up the bag, turn it off, and we keep the chest pumped right up to push the air out until I do this stitch up. Then we breathe normally. We're using the lungs to try and push all the air out of that chest cavity and just have the air in the lungs, not in the cavity. So we've sewn all the chest wall up. We're going to throw some saline over it and just see if any bubbles come through. That tells us there's a hole there and we need to fix it. Where you go. There's no air under the skin, so we don't seem to have a leak. We may have hit a home run here. Here we go. Ready? You got the fluids ready? Go. With surgery over, Rob does an x-ray to make sure there's no air trapped in the chest that could still cause Elle's lungs to fatally collapse. Go. It's not good news. There's too much air outside the lungs here, for my liking. Oh no, that's not good. At SASH, Alex is shocked that an ultrasound on bloated cat Ozzy is showing fluid in all the wrong places. So we have fluid in his chest cavity that's collapsing his lung and then fluid in the sac surrounding his heart that's squeezing down onto his heart, which is all not, not good things and could be life-threatening. I was expecting to see fluid in his abdomen, but I'm not expecting the amount of fluid that we see in other parts of his body, like in his chest cavity and around his heart. Yeah, that's a lot of fluid in there. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to measure the pericardial effusion because that's the next most life-threatening thing that we have. The pericardial effusion, or build-up of fluid around Ozzy's heart, plus the fluid in his chest, is putting dangerous pressure on the elderly cat's heart and lungs. So we're just going to collect a little sample from his abdomen and just see what kind of fluid is in here. And we got clear fluid. So no blood. Looking at how transparent that is, I'm thinking that this could be an indicator of heart disease. So we can run some tests on this and get some more uh, analysis back from the laboratory to see if there's things like cancer cells in here. We'll, we'll need to drain his abdomen and his chest, most likely, so we're going to have to drain both. Alex now wants to remove some of the fluid from Ozzy's abdomen to help relieve the pressure on his heart and lungs. Okay, blood pressure looks good, heart rate looks good. So we're just going to get this needle, put this in his belly and drain some of the fluid from his abdomen and that, that will hopefully help him to breathe a bit better. I'm just gonna go in now. So that's already 10 mils there, isn't it? I think his breathing's a bit better. His breathing looks a little bit deeper now. So if you remove too much fluid at once, that is a, a significant amount of protein that we could be taking out of his body and it can exacerbate the issue and cause the fluid to come back quicker. So we might just leave uh, a bit in there that the body can reabsorb and then help to treat the underlying problem, which at this stage we're still investigating. I think we'll stop. Okay. He's like a deflated balloon. He's gonna have a big saggy belly. That's a lot of fluid for a little cat. We've got 1.4 litres of, of abdominal fluid here. So I think that he actually has a fair bit left in there. There's actually another litre in there of fluid. So we've only drained about half, about half of what's potentially in there. So seeing this amount of fluid outside of his body, you can really get an idea of how much pressure that would be putting on his internal organs and his ability to breathe. So I'm sure he's feeling a lot better without that fluid in his body. Okay, here's your bed for the night, Ozzy. Get you all settled. Ozzy will be closely monitored in the ICU to make sure the dangerous fluid levels don't return. There we go. 
And then what we'll do is we'll send out the samples that we've collected uh, and see whether or not the laboratory can give us any information as to what could be causing this. There's too much air outside the lungs here for my liking. In Sydney, young dog L is in grave danger and Rob and fellow vet Russell are using a needle and syringe to try to suck out air trapped inside her chest. Go. Yes. Yep. The 12-week-old's in danger of her lungs collapsing if the air isn't removed. She's breathing better. Yeah, you can see the actual lungs now um, a lot better. Before, you would see all the air outside the lungs in the chest cavity. When well, we've sucked that out, and now we can see the, the lungs right up against the chest wall and the heart laying down on the sternum where it should be. So it's a lot better. The next 12 hours for me will be staying awake with her through the night. And every few hours I'll be x-raying her to make sure that no pneumothorax develops. If I get three or four clear x-rays where there's no air, oh, then we're out of jail. Then we're really happy. As Elle begins the long road to recovery from her life-saving surgery, it's time to break the news to her anxious owner, Angela, who's been beside herself with worry. Is it okay? It was a battle. I won't tell you it wasn't. So it, this was a tough one. It was really bad. Yeah. Straight away she calms down. How good is that? It is. I'm feeling relief because I've just had her attached to me, you know, 24 7 for 12 weeks. So I couldn't imagine what life would be like without her. What you did was just amazing. Seriously. Yeah, it's probably all the it, it, With any other owner, she would have made it. Angela, you've done a great job with her. Thank you. Angela would literally carry this pup around, bum down head up and just keep walking around so that all the food would just stay down. She really loves this dog, so seeing her so happy that she's got through at least the first phase of surgery, just I really feel it, I do. Now we've just got to hope that everything goes smoothly for me and no complications. Yep. Uh, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm emotionally drained. Would I do it all again? Hell yes. <laughs> In Bondi, a case of a little dog with a nasty hole in its cheek and a suspicious tooth is turning out to be one of the most shocking infections Kate has ever seen. What I can't really get over is I just can't get over that she has actually just been walking around like this, like being like, I'm fine. The whole root is just black in there. So this tooth that has the abscess has three roots. So what we have to do, we have to section this tooth and we have to take out each root one at a time because the whole thing's not just gonna come out in one nice little package. Yay. Done. It's a poor little lump. Oh my gosh. Oh Dylan, you're gonna feel so much better after this. Well, there's one tooth that is now gone. Hello, look at you, in your little bed. Three hours later, after a well-earned recovery. Hello, little chooky. Oh, little chooky. Oh, oh. Are you good? Yeah. Brave little Dylan is ready to go home. Your mum's out here. Here she is. Are you ready? Here she is. Okay, 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 your mum. <laughs> She's like, oh, there you go. Bless. I'm a bit sleepy. I've had lots of drugs today. She's very sweet. Dylan's going to have soft food so that she doesn't actually damage all of those stitches. We're going to get her back in for a number of rechecks over the next couple of weeks because we need to make sure that this infection is clearing. 
the hole in her face is going to heal over beautifully and before you know it everything is going to look exactly the way it did before. Bye! How are you going? Eating your breakfast already? In Sydney, it's a new day at Sash, and Alex has come to check on her patient, Ozzy. Looking a little bit more cat-shaped today. It's great to see Ozzy feeling so much better today and ready to go home to his family. At the moment, his uh, diagnosis is open. We still need to do some further investigations to find what the root cause is of this fluid accumulation, but at least we are able to provide him some relief from all that pressure in his abdomen and help to make him a little bit more energetic than he was. Hey mate, there's a good boy. After having a massive 1.5 litres of fluid drained from his chest and abdomen, Ozzy is ready to go home. Okay, here he is. So we'll just pop him up on the table. Hi. Last night was stressful. I didn't sleep because I didn't know what was going to happen with him and how he was going to be, whether he would pull through or whether they would find lots of bad stuff. He was 8.1 kilos yesterday, and after draining all that fluid, he's now 6.1 kilos. Wow, that's a big difference, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. He's almost two kilos lighter than he was yesterday. Can you drain my stomach too? Oh, <laughs> I wish it was that easy. <laughs> and look at his feet as well. Have yeah, you noticed his feet? Right down, yeah, they? they're a lot smaller than they were. Yeah. But although he's a lot more comfortable, Ozzy's not in the clear just yet. We still don't know the reason for the fluid at this stage, so we have uh, got the fluid samples from his chest and abdomen to send off to the lab. So we'll get those results back in the next few days and see whether or not there might be things like cancer cells in there, uh, or if we might need to go down the path of something like heart or kidney disease. Yeah, he's looking like normal again, except for all the hair missing. <laughs> but yeah, he's good. He's a very good patient. <laughs> Oh no, you don't want to go in there. We're going home. Come on, here we go. Come on. Boy. Can't wait to get him home. And yeah, give him lots of love. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much for everything. Not a problem. Really My pleasure. It. He's such a good boy. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> good girl. Ellie, you're going home. Six weeks since her life saving surgery to open up her constricted food pipe. Girl. Okay. Elle is recovering brilliantly. She's enjoying solids and putting on much needed weight. You can have leftovers. <gasps> the lively five month old can now look forward to a full and normal life. She's eating like a big girl. Angela has also begun entering the gorgeous white Swiss Shepherd in dog shows. The proud mum was ecstatic when Elle won her first competition. And it's good news for Ozzy, with no more fluid buildup in his belly. Test results were inconclusive, and he's now on medication and is responding well. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.